Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to teach you how to build AI agents using AI agents. And to do that, we're going to be using Archon. Archon is an open source agent tier, as they call it, which is made by this very famous YouTuber, Cole. I'm a very big fan of his. He does a lot for the community. He's also the person who created Bult.DIY. And he just does a lot for this community of AI and AI agents. So definitely check his channel out, which I have on the screen right now. Today, I'm going to teach you how to set it up and how to use it. I'm going to take you step by step because I know a lot of you guys get overwhelmed when you see a GitHub repository. And I'm going to cut right to the chase. Over here, we're in the main page, which I'm going to link down below. And there's some information about Aircon. So as I said, Aircon is the first agent here and AI agent designed to autonomously build, refine and optimize other AI agents. Now to set this up, there's two ways to do it. There's the recommended way, which is using Docker. And then there's the other way, which is using a local Python installation. Now, Docker, I found to be much better and much easier to use and to run every time you open your computer or to rerun. So that's the way I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do it. And Docker is just something that if you really want to improve your skills in building AI agents and just programming and stuff like that, Docker is going to be very important and it's a very useful tool to get familiar with and start using. Now, first of all, there's going to be some prerequisites that you're going to need to have. Uh, first of all, Docker and then uh, Python 3.11 or more. You're going to need a super base account and you're going to need a uh, API key depending on the LLM you're going to use. I'm going to be using Open Router. Obviously, guys, I'm going to get into more detail as you move on in the video. Once you have installed Docker and Python, you can finally start setting up Archon. So to do that, first, we're going to need to clone this GitHub repo. And as you guys know, I like using Cursor to do it, but you can also do it on the command prompt. You can do it using WSL. So once you are here, you can clone the repo. So the thing is, I already have Archon installed, so I will not be doing it again. But once you have installed it, you're going to see that a new path has appeared on your computer. So you're just going to do control click here. And we are officially inside the Archon file. And it's going to look something like this. Now, there is one thing that you need to do once you are inside. I want you guys to go to the .env.example file and I want you to copy and paste it. And then once you do, you are going to get this one, which I'm not going to open because it contains all my private keys. But it's going to look exactly like this because we just copy pasted it, obviously, and renamed it. So you're going to put the base URL. I'm going to be using Open Router. So I'm just going to control click Open Router. It's going to open over here. And then you're going to go to Keys and Create a Key. As you guys can see, I have one right here, which I already paid some money on testing this for you. And obviously, you're going to need to have some credits. As you guys can see, you don't really need much credits, but you need something. So you're going to put the open router URL over here for the LLM API key. I showed you guys right now, just copy and paste the API key. And then for the OpenAI API, I've also done this many times. Just go to plat can type platform.openai settings api keys create select your thing and create the secret key copy the secret key and put it right in here now for the superbase url you're going to need to go to superbase and you're going to need to create an account i already have an account once you created an account you're going to need to create a project to create a project, just add the project name, Archon2, and then you can just put any password, select a region, and create a new project. Now, to get the keys that you're going to need, you are going to go to that API, and here you're going to get the URL. You're going to need to add this URL, which is right here. You're going to put that there, and then for the service key, you are going to go just a bit down, you're going to see here service underscore role secret. You're going to reveal and copy this. Once you have copied it, you can paste it right in here. And that's that. Now you just need the reasoning model and the primary model. You can choose any model you want since we're going to be using Open Router. Open Router has nearly any model you can think of. You can use DeepSeek. But 
I'm going to use the most powerful available right now, which is going to be Cloth 3.7 Thinking for my reasoning model and Cloth 3.7 Sonnet for my base model. You're just going to copy, paste over there in the primary model and then copy and paste in the reasoning model. For the embedding model, you can use whatever you want, but just to keep it simple, I would just suggest that you keep this one, the text embedding three small by OpenAI, and it will work just fine. Now you are ready to launch this whole thing, and we're going to be launching it using Docker. So once you install it, just open Docker on your desktop, and you may or may not have to log in. I did kind of forget. I do have it open. Yep, you're going to need to log in. And once you have logged in, you don't really need to do anything. Just minimize it. Just make sure that it's open in the background. Then we're going to go back to GitHub and we're going to copy this. It's just a two-step process. Very nice and simple. And then you're going to paste it in here. This is going to take a while for you guys, much longer than it took for me. Because as you guys can see now, it's just going to tell me that it already exists. Yep, as you guys can see, now it told me that Archon is officially running and it gave me the link to where I can access it at. You can control click and it's right here ready for you to use. And now you're officially inside the interface. Now here are the steps that you can follow to, to set up this AI agent. But I'm just going to do it for you guys right here because it's much easier. Now, since we set up the environment already, which I highly, highly recommend, it will just pop up over here and you won't really need to do anything. But if you did not already set it up and you would like to just set it up over here, you can also do that. You can just input everything and then click save environment variables. But again, I recommend to just set it up from the beginning so you don't need to keep repeating this over and over again. Then after setting up the environment, go to database. Now here, um, go to the instructions for recreating the site page table. So here, first you're going to need to open the SQL editor using this URL. And then once you are inside of here, in the project that you created earlier and got the URL and the secret key from, you are going to be over here. So you're going to create the SQL query. You're going to copy and execute the following SQL. So you're going to copy this. You're going to paste it here and, and you're going to click execute, which is at the, at the bottom right over there. And then once you have finished that, you're going to again, copy all of this, paste it here and click the same thing again. And then once you have done that, you will be finished. And then you should see that once you go into it again, it's going to tell you that the site pages already exist. And also here you have the embedding dimensions. If you kept it at OpenAI's embedding model, then you don't really need to change this. But if you did, you're going to need to change it to something like, I forgot, but I think it's like 768 or something, depending on the embedding model you're using. But just keep it at OpenAI and you won't need to do anything. So that's it over here. Here you can clean the, the table data, but I won't because in this step, you can crawl the Pydantic AI documents and you can clear them. Now I'm just going to do this. Let me clear everything. And then I'm going to crawl it again. Now when you're crawling it, you're going to see it's over here pending. You can see it scrape through the website and it's gathering all the Pydantic AI documents and it's going to implement RAG on it. So it's able to create the AI agents without hallucinating and with the proper knowledge base behind it. And this is why the AI agent is so powerful because it uses RAG to, to gather information from the Pydantic AI documents. And as I'm going to show you guys later, it's not going to only be the Pydantic AI documents. It's also going to be the Lang graph document soon and many, many more like Crew AI, as the creator said, Cole. Now guys, once you have finished, it's normal to receive like two fill URLs. This is best case scenario. Sometimes you're going to get four, three, or maybe even more. If it's a number that you feel like it's too much, just restart the process and you should get varying numbers every time. But two is the least I ever got, which is really good. Now for the next step, it's going to be the start agent service. Now this is going to be for setting up the MCP. What does setting up the MCP do? Well, setting up the MCP lets you use this AI agent using something like cursor. So you could be building with cursor and also have access to this AI agent, which obviously is very ideal. So we are going to be setting this up and I highly, highly recommend everyone watching this to also set this up. That way you're going to have an optimal building session when creating your AI agent. So to start the agent service, just click start and it should be fine now. Now go to MCP and I'm going to be using cursor to set this up, but you could also use Klein and WinSurf, which have slightly different configurations. And then you're going to copy this 
and you are going to do the following so you're going to go to where am i okay you're going to cursor settings mcp then you're going to go to you're going to create a new mcp you're going to create this one called archon you're going to write command not sse since we're going to be running this locally and then you're going to paste this and then click add and you should have it all set up now as you guys can see mine is already finished and it's completely working if you see the green light it means everything's working fine and if you see that there's tools available to use that's also a good sign it means that it's working perfectly fine and then you are finally finished you've set up the mcp you have set up the ai agent and implemented drag into it by scraping the pydantic ai documents and now it's officially ready everything is working just fine you could go to the chat if you're not going to be setting up the mcp server this is going to be the only way for you guys to use it so we could just use the example that they provided and see what happens click enter and now you're going to see the agent getting to work and guys as you can see give it like maybe a minute or a couple seconds and it will create the agent for you and one thing that I really like, I think the creator probably kept this in mind. It always gives you the whole AI agent and plus it always gives it to you in a very step-by-step -step way, a very systematic format where you're able to just follow everything. It tells you file one, the agent.py, file two, file three, file four, and then the gives you the requirements and then how to run the AI agent. So first you need to install the requirements and then set up the API key and then run the agent. And then here it puts some additional features that you can add in the future. So it puts a lot of thought before giving you the answer. And it gives you everything in a very nice, easy to follow and polished way. Now I'm going to show you how you could do this exact same thing, but inside of Cursor AI using the MCP. Now the nice thing about using this with Cursor AI is that it will get the same output. But then Cursor AI will implement everything for you. So it's working hand in hand with Cursor, which obviously is much more optimal than this. But before we go do that, I just want to show you one more thing. They also give you an option to deploy your AI agent once you are done with it. So you can use Streamlit, Snowflake or other platforms. This is good if you're, let's say, an, a an automation agency who wants to deploy the AI agent for, let's say, their client or something, or you're a company who wants to deploy it to the cloud. Well, that's an option for you. Now, going back to what we were doing, let's go do the exact same thing, but using the MCP. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to Cursor. You can make sure the MCP is running fine. And then there's one more thing left for us to do. We can select cloud over here and we can tell it using Archon. So I just told it using Archon, build me an AI agent that can search the web using the Brave API. And as you can see, it's calling now the MCP tool and you can run the tool. And you can here see the input and output that it sent it. Sorry for the angle shift, but I can't really see my screen with my camera over there. We can see the user inputs. It went and it told Archon to build an AI agent that can search the web. Now Archon is going to build the AI agent and then send the result back to Cursor. And then Cursor is going to implement it for us. So that's essentially in a nutshell how it's going to function and how MPP Third would work in general. All right, guys, once it has finished setting up the AI agent as it did for me right now, and it set up this AI agent by collaborating with Cursor, and Cursor managed to build this AI agent by collaborating with the MCP server, which obviously made it build this great AI agent for us. Now, to start this AI agent, I just told it how do I start this AI agent, and it told me to install the requirements, which I'm going to do right now. And then it told me to set up the environment variables, which I did. I just copy pasted and renamed it to .env. And then I put the API keys here, which I'm not going to be showing. But to get them, all I did was go to the two links provided. So platform.openai.com and brave.com slash search slash query. Anyways, back over here, it finished installing the dependencies. And now all we're left to do is just run the AI agent. So it gave me here an advanced example, which I'm going to be using. And there you go. It searched the web for, for a bunch of relevant sources relating to climate change and then here the ai is supposed to give you a response which we're supposed to do using open ai but i think there is a problem with my open ai api key i think the servers are down from the time of recording this video because i've never run into this issue before and it's 100 percent related to my open ai api key so i think the servers are just down right now but when you try it it should work just fine and yeah guys 
I guess that's it for me. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and like and turn on the notifications. And then make sure to comment down below what you liked, what you disliked about this video so I can keep improving the quality of this channel for you guys. And also make sure to comment what you would like me to make a video on next. And yeah, guys, that's it for me. Thank you. Bye.